she was like 19 years old. You know, this little girl with a dream. She came blown into Nashville and she had a karaoke tape. Mindy came to town like most, with big hopes and a big dream. It was an amazing thing watching this cocoon turn into a butterfly. Studio musician Jimmy Nichols spent months helping prepare Mindy to be discovered. Less than a year later, she was by music row icon Joe Galanti. When she opened her mouth, it was like the sunshine through the windows. And he, Joe knew it. Joe saw it. And Joe knew that it was magic. Signed to B&A Records in 1996, Mindy released her debut album, 10,000 Angels. I need 10,000 angels. The album went double platinum and spawned four charting singles, including her only number one hit, Guys Do It All The Time. Mindy went on to be nominated for ACM's Top New Female Artist and released her sophomore album, If I Don't Stay The Night. It didn't see the success of her debut, but was certified gold. A third studio album followed in 1999, but dismal sales resulted in Mindy being dropped from her label. She was picked up by Capitol, only to lose the deal after her 2002 self-titled album tanked. Although she never had a song chart after, she remained significant because of her broken personal life. When she couldn't tour anymore, I think that's when the demons would come back up because her real escape was through her voice and through her music. McCready did attempt a fifth studio album appropriately titled I'm Still Here, but it never saw any success. Before her death, she recorded one final song, I'll See You Yesterday, was released on YouTube the weekend she took her life. Her friends say the song was her way of saying goodbye. I think that song uh, reflected a, a time that she wished she could have back.